Hey guys, it's Hink here. So today we're going to be talking about a paper just like this right here. And what it shows in this paper is that literally within 12 months, there was 2.5 or essentially one inch growth in pubertal boys members with this one drug. But as always, there's a catch guys. We're going to break this down. There's a little bit of science in here, but I promise guys, this one is worth it to stick around because I think there's a lot we can take away from it. So today we're going to be talking about what we call aromatase inhibitors. So guys, what is an aromatase inhibitors? I'm going to break it down simply. Aromatase is an enzyme that can basically convert your androgens, your testosterone, essentially to estrogen, the female hormone. An aromatase inhibitor is going to literally inhibit that aromatase enzyme from converting to estrogen. My exposure to this in the medical field is we often use it as a treatment for actual breast cancer because most breast cancers are estrogen based, but that's neither here nor there. But there is a possible role for these when we're talking about male enhancement or male enlargement. Some of you guys that are familiar with bodybuilding know that if you abuse testosterone, you can get gynecomastia or as you know, we grow up calling it was bitch tits. Here's a picture over here for those that you haven't seen it. If you inject too much testosterone, have too much testosterone, you get some people that converts too much to estrogen and the excessive estrogen then like creates breast tissue growth. So you might've heard of this before. There's a couple of important things here. To start, we're going to break down these papers is looking at basically boys going through puberty or boys that have underdeveloped penises, micro penises. And you can actually see that aromatase inhibitor supplementation actually can cause a dramatic increase in size. In this paper, they actually use boys with micro penis, um, which is basically greater than two standard deviations below normal. So if your standard range is 15 centimeters and the standard deviation is about 1.6, it would mean that anything below 15 centimeters minus 3.32 or minus 3.2 is going to mean you have a micro penis. Funny enough, if you have a penis that's greater than two standard deviations above normal, according to this paper here, guys, means that you have a macro penis or a significantly larger penis. And in this case, it's actually 6.5 inches. So hopefully a lot of you guys should feel much better about yourself. So what they did is they tested these, what well, they treated these boys with a combination of both testosterone and an aromatase inhibitor. What they found in this study is that in the people that were just treated with testosterone alone, they increased actually their size by about 1.9 centimeters. However, if they had a combination, they actually increased their size by 2.24 centimeters, guys. 2.54 centimeters as an inch. So we're talking about almost a full inch, guys. Massive gains. And this is just in three months. And then the other like really, really interesting point, for most of you guys watching this video, this doesn't apply to you. You guys may or may not know this, but estrogen is actually what's responsible for closing your epiphyseal plates. It, or basically, the, the growth plates in your bones, once they start getting exposed to estrogen, it actually causes them to shut down and close up. In the, with these aromatase inhibitors, because you're limiting estrogen use, you do not get those same signals to stop growth. Actually, you can prolong the growth period by prolonging puberty without the adverse effects that are related to like estrogen exposure. They saw in this paper that you still maintained a high growth velocity without affecting bone maturation. I mean, guys, that's a like a pretty big deal. Yeah, no way, bro. Yeah, <laughs> So in this next case report here, it showed something very similar. They had boys with short stature that were treated with aromatase inhibitors. And what they saw was they had improvement in height caused by basically failing to advance bone age. So the bone age stays the age it should, but you get ex excess exposure to testosterone, which causes the bones to grow bigger and taller. But you don't have that effect of shutting things off with estrogen. They got taller and they had bigger penises from this aromatase inhibitor. Okay. And then we have this paper here from the beginning where you're looking at guys with what we call partial androgen insensitivity syndrome. They don't respond to androgens like they should. If you want to learn more, just, just look it up. So what they found is that penis size increased by 2.5 centimeters, height increased from 158 centimeters to 166 centimeters without increasing bone age. And the testosterone jumped from 280 to almost 900 nanograms per deciliter, whereas the estradiol, so guys, when you have estrogen, we say estrogen in general, but there's actually many different estrogen. One of the most important ones is something that's called E2 or estradiol. It's the most, most active, especially in women of reproductive age. So that's what we're going to be talking about here. 
So similar to the other like videos I've made, like you know this one here on combination of testosterone and growth hormone, if you have already gone through a normal puberty, is that going to make a difference? If you were to hop on and you're 25 years old, you hop on an aromatase inhibitor, is it gonna make you bigger? Probably not, but there's still a lot that we can actually learn from this data. This is just setting up background, guys. Stay with me. So there's actually data like in this, when you're looking at what we call hyperestrogenism, where like too much estrogen can actually be associated with erectile dysfunction for several different ways. One of which, which we're gonna talk about more in a second, is that there's something that's called VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor. It's responsible for a lot of things like angiogenesis, arteriogenesis, the creation of new blood vessels, but it can also increase the permeability, meaning the leaking of the actual blood vessels you could actually develop a potentially a venous leak type of erectile dysfunction or be at a higher risk of it partially due to estrogen. That's what they found in this paper is that you do have that you do have like sometimes impeded penile development. Guys, and I've said this before, you guys probably think that I hate fat people, which of course I do not, but I do think it is much more harmful than people think it is to be fat. It is not okay to be fat, I'm sorry. Call me a body shamer if you want to. Can, can, hashtag cancel hink. But it's just true, guys. It's not healthy to be overweight. It's not healthy to be fat, period. End of discussion. But especially boys that are obese, they have higher levels of estrogen, and that higher level of estrogen is number one, it's gonna inhibit your growth, so you're gonna be shorter than normal. And number two, it's gonna inhibit penile development because you're gonna have a decreased testosterone to estrogen ratio. You're gonna be have a shorter penis than normal, okay? Here's another paper here, guys, and you can have erectile dysfunction directly related to the estradiol or the higher estrogen levels. There's something that's called GnRH. Don't, don't freaking worry about it gonadotropin releasing hormone, but what it does is it signals your body to produce more testosterone. GnRH then goes to like LH and FSH, but then go to the testicles and actually stimulate your testicles to produce testosterone. It's kind of basic anatomy physiology. But if you have increased levels of estradiol, it actually blocks that GnRH signal so you don't get that LH and FSH and you therefore have decreased rates of testosterone. And what they found in this paper here is that estradiol is clinically significant as far as its relationship with erectile dysfunction, even when you control for things like men who smoke, men that are older, lower testosterone levels, independent of those things, it is still a major predictor of erectile dysfunction. Anybody that knows what I talk about is how important things like erectile function are. So if you have decreased erectile function, that is going to, at baseline, number one, limit your size, but it's also going to limit your gains. That's part of the reason why I make such a big deal about like your, your, your endothelial, the lining of the blood vessels in your penis, the health there is so critically important. And that's why I developed like our product Vigor, an Amazon choice product, because it maintains that endothelial function. And it also does things like boost your nitric oxide and nitric oxide synthase, which are essential, the most critical role when you're talking about actually good erectile function. So if you're interested, guys, please check it out. Now, here is a very interesting paper, at least that I thought, I know I'm a, I'm a huge nerd, but what they found is that Estradiol concentrations are particularly important in erectile function at the actual base of the penis. They actually evaluated different erectile function at either the base or the tip. And at the tip, it, uh, estradiol levels weren't as significant, but at the base, they were absolutely significant. Now, it is important to know that estrogen is necessary for healthy erectile function, but an imbalance can absolutely lead to erectile dysfunction. And guys, once again, I, I swear I'm not trying... I say at the end of my videos, guys, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement. Always remember you are enough just, just as you are. And I seriously mean that. So I, I'm not trying to make anybody that's overweight or fat feel bad. But literally, I don't know if you guys realize that essentially, I'm sure, actually, Hink, and I'm sure there's always that guy in the comments, but fat is essentially converted into estrogen. So the fatter you are, the higher your estrogen levels are going to be. Therefore, that can actually shut down that actual testosterone production. So you can have low testosterone just by being fat. Once again, one of the negative things of being fat, I'm, I'm sorry guys, it, it's just fact. But what they found in this paper here is that guys that were like very obese that underwent 
bariatric surgery. That's the only intervention they had is that they, sh they literally shut down part of their stomach so they couldn't eat as much. They found that that actually increased testosterone levels because they weren't as fat, they lost a bunch of weight and that shifted the balance of testosterone to estrogen in a more favorable balance and it stopped that inhibition of that GnRH and led to higher test guys. So it is important to exercise and eat right. Doesn't mean you have to be shredded, doesn't mean you have to be 10% body fat, but it does mean you need to not be obese. Once again, guys, when we were talking about estrogen levels in this animal model here, they actually looked at rabbits that were chronically treated with estradiol and what it found that that excess exposure to the actual estrogen decreased the actual responsiveness and the relaxant nature of the corpus cavernosum, the actual chambers on the side of the penis. They weren't as, re as responsive to things like nitric oxide, the normal signal that actually creates an erection. So if you have even a little too much estrogen levels, guys, that can literally lead to erectile dysfunction itself as proven in this animal model. So here's a quote. These results indicate that estradiol treatments in chronic exposure of phytoestrogen may cause receptor-mediated pathophysiologic changes in erectile function, leading to erectile dysfunction. In a nutshell, estrogen, bad for erectile function, especially in excess. But once again, guys, here's a paper where they talk about how estrogen is necessary for normal, basically healthy functioning in general. That's why these typically bodybuilders that abuse testosterone, but also abuse aromatase inhibitors and crash their estrogen, or just you little SARMs goblins out there that I, I watch Derek and I do SARMs now, I'm strong, fake ass natties. But anyways, when you take a SARM, it actually causes a similar inhibition of testosterone. It can shut you down and not all SARMs shut you down, Hink. There's, very, there's levels to it, guys. I, I get it, I get it, but when you don't have natural testosterone production, you shut that down, you don't have therefore conversion of testosterone to estrogen, and you can have erectile dysfunction from SARMs use for that exact reason, guys. So you do need a little bit of estrogen or a healthy amount of estrogen. We already talked about estrogen's role when we're talking about that VEGF, the vascular endothelial growth factor. Now, one can argue that there is a role for the VEGF, that growth factor for the, the vascular endothelial tissue in penile enlargement. Sure, I, I get that, guys. But here's a paper that, number one, just shows that estrogen is directly linked to VEGF, VEGF production. So you have that kind of precedent right there. All right, but then in this paper right here, it actually talks about how excessive VEGF production can lead to extra what we call permeable vessels, meaning leaky vessels, It can lead to things like, number one, venogenic erectile dysfunction, so vascular leak, and number two, actually increased edema formation from increased permeability. So what I'm saying is that, in a nutshell, if you are overweight, and therefore you have too much estrogen, you're putting yourself at risk from erectile dysfunction from number one, having an improper testosterone and estrogen imbalance, and number two, actually leaky vessels. So if you are overweight and you're doing PE and your estrogen levels might be out of whack and you have too much VEGF, that could in fact lead to an increased risk of erectile dysfunction or injury. So there is like, now, is that a, is that a little bit of a reach? Yeah, you could, you could argue that. I mean, I don't have a paper showing that well, I mean, I actually, I kind of do have a paper that actually showed that that uh, that estradiol levels lead to increased VEGF, which can therefore lead to erectile dysfunction. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't miss. No. But once again, guys, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to shame anybody. It's just science. It's obviously I feel passionate about it. And guys, I like, I haven't been, I mean, I've been kind of thin all my life. Well, I, I lost 30 pounds, so I, I was lazy. I ate like crap and I, it was the pandemic and all this crap happened. So I get it, but there's no better day than today to start making decisions to move more and eat less. It's, it's that freaking simple. It is. Here's a wonderful quote. In particular, estradiol level can influence venous vascular tone via VEGF or nitric oxide, thus affecting venous leakage dysfunction. <laughs> what, what, what more do you want me to say, guys? When we're talking about use of an aromatase inhibitor, I mean, quite honestly, you shouldn't need it. You need to lose weight if that's what's causing your, your increased estradiol levels. But that's where particular an aromatase inhibitor could come in, especially at a low dose. But guys, of course, nothing is without its side effects. In these women that are on aromatase inhibitors for breast cancer, we have to counsel them on all of these different side effects because of the important role that estrogen has. And even lowering that, or especially bottoming it out, can make a big difference as far as quality of life. So you have things like generic things, headache, hot flashes, night sweats, in particular, joint pain, muscle pain, depression, weight gain, 
These are all symptoms. And then there's even more serious things like heart abnormalities and even decreases in vision change because your actual vision receptors are actually estrogen based in your eye. If you block that estrogen, you can actually affect that. All right, guys, so what is my bottom line when it comes to aromatase ACE inhibitors? What am I gonna recommend? Before I get there, guys, my course is live. If you wanna learn how to get coached by me to actually get bigger like I did, guys, I put in 1.5 inches in length, documented, and I'm not just, oh no, you trust me, but documented, guys, it's documented, and I put on just shy of an inch in girth, and it's all doing the techniques that I'm gonna teach you in this course here. So if you're interested, check it out, guys. But my bottom line is number one, if you're concerned that you might have elevated estrogen levels, Get your estrogen levels checked. Get a full panel, okay? Testosterone, estrogen, free test, LH, FSH, all of those things, and actually get an answer. Don't just assume what you may or may not have, guys, because you oftentimes assume wrong. Number two, don't be overweight, guys. It, 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 it is a choice. For some people, it's easier. I get that, guys, but the importance of diet and exercise, and you can do it. I believe in you. Number three, guys, now this is a bit controversial, but if you have a son, low key, a low dose aromatase inhibitor is gonna make them taller and it's gonna make them have a bigger pee pee. There's all those side effects that I just listed and there's no long-term data for that. But I'm not gonna lie, that is very interesting to me at least. You got me. When we're talking about aromatase inhibitors, guys, as far as like PE, so what can it do? It can boost your testosterone levels. So you can have therefore better arousal, better desire, and therefore better workouts, especially when we're talking about things like girth workouts with pumping or clamping. Because you have better test levels basically and a better test estrogen ratio, you'll get better nocturnal erections and you'll have better recovery. Especially if you take something like a scoop of vigor before bed, you'll, you'll have a lot of morning wood, trust me. Taking this alone, taking an aromatase inhibitor alone is not going to directly increase your size for most men. Of course, you have to consider the side effects of this medication. Am I going to add it into my regimen? No, guys, of course I'm not. You, you know how conservative I am when it comes to any of this stuff. So, so no, I'm not going to do it. And quite honestly, I don't suggest you do it. I don't think the data is strong enough that there would be any direct benefit for your average guy doing this. But it is something to think about. So if, if you were diagnosed with venogenic vascular erectile dysfunction, you might want to get your estradiol levels checked because I think it could have an impact, guys. If any of you guys are injured and just need to reach me for coaching or you want to just me directly to do a plan for you, I can be reached at my Patreon. But anyways, guys, remember, once again, you are enough just as you are. But there's also nothing wrong with self-improvement. Until the next one, guys, peace and love.